Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Clapp, and I'm Arlington's Conservation Administrator. The January 18th, 2024 meeting of the Arlington Conservation Commission will be conducted in a remote format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 to extend the remote participation of public meetings until the 31st of March, 2025. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. I will put a link to all the meeting materials into the chat right now. Go. All right. Chuck Taroni, our Conservation Commission Chair, shall facilitate tonight's meeting. Please note that there will be a comment period for each hearing, and each vote dur taken during this meeting will be conducted via a roll call vote. And we will begin with a roll call of attendance. Sure. I guess I'll lead that. Um, Mike Gildiscame? Present. Susan Chapnick? Present. David White. Present. David Kaplan. Here. Brian McBride. Hearing nothing. Uh, Brian may join us later. I know Nathaniel Stevens said that he'd join us later. I think uh, so Bri did Brian say he wasn't going to be here? For what? I don't, that he had a family um, obligation? I thought he, yeah, he said he's going to miss tonight's meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Brian McBride will be out for this meeting. Nathaniel will join us later. And we have associate member uh, Eileen Coleman. Present. And uh, Sarah Frank uh, Afro. <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay. going to. I'm present. <laughs> I got it now. Sarah Alfaro Franco. There you, you go. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have a roll call uh, at this point. I believe the next step is to uh, review the agenda. So I'd like to do that because we have a couple continuations and I don't want people hanging around if they don't have to, just to find out that some of these items have been continued to our next meeting. So we're gonna start off with our minutes review. It's administrative. And then uh, just note that the correspondence is of where the correspondence is available that the commission received over the last two weeks. Then we'll have a discussion item on uh, 34 Dudley Street for an escrow agreement, and then an update on Mount Gilboa, an update on the Water Bodies Working Group. We'll have a vote on the Warren article and a uh, the Spy Pond uh, <clears throat> proposed change. We'll have to. Then uh, Parks and Rec and an update from the Parks and Rec. And I think that no one went to the last meeting. So this will just be about talking, finding out who's going to join the next meeting on the 23rd and then the artificial turf uh, update. And I was going to ask Sarah uh, if she had an update from the tree committee, but we'll, we'll get to that later on when we come to that point in the agenda. Then the hearings for a quest for determination for 35 Beverly. And 35 Beverly is going to be continued. So if anyone's here for that, um, I want you to know that. And then a request for determination for 43 Beverly and our two notices of intent, 88 uh, Coolidge Road and Thorndike Place will both be continued until February 1st. And with that, we'll start in on the first item, which is the review of the meeting minutes. Ryan, do you have those available to post so we can look over the um, any corrections and edits? Yep, let me know if you can see that. Yep. Perfect. So it looks like his first correction is from Susan, yeah. Yep. I'm sorry, I'm, I was on mute. I, want, <laughs> I wanted to just scroll back up and correct Sarah's name. Yeah. The spelling was, was incorrect. That so is a, Associate it? Commissioner, it's S-A-R-A -A without an H. Oh. And then A-L-F-A-R-O. Yeah, you got it. All right. Thank you. We don't want to misspell people's names. Yeah. No, it was that's accidental. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Chuck. Oh, I just uh sure. So uh moving right along. 
So it's a little small on the screen, but I'm I'm trying to trying to read it yeah. and um, some more from Susan. Awesome. I think Nathaniel looked this over also, so there might be some edits from Nathaniel. Uh, yes, there should be a few comments from Nathaniel, but majority were <clears throat> Susan. <laughs> So don't don't keep scrolling down, go back up a little bit because okay. Nathaniel and I both agreed that we need to list the items that yes. were in the letter. And I didn't have the letter. I don't think Nathaniel did either. Um it should be in Dave David Morgan's uh, I have a physical line. copy of that letter, so I can Okay, great. So you could just put bullet points mm -hmm. in yep. what was in the letter because we said that should go in the the um updated enforcement order so it would be good to list them all right that, that was our recommendation thank you and again just stop me if you yeah if someone sees something just call out <clears throat> otherwise so the only reason i added some information in here is i just think it's important to have a record of what park and rec said they were envisioning in this space, just in case that changes over time. So, Clint is misspelled again. Oh, yep. It's E N. Yeah. E N. Good. Yeah. Common error. <laughs> I think spell check always tries to change it, David. And boom, there it is again. Yeah. Mm. Looks good to me. Hmm. Okay. So I get a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes as amended. And second. I'll second. second. Oh, go ahead, David. <laughs> David White, second. Um, step to the roll call. So Mike Gildas game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Uh, where am I at? Who yes. did I miss here? Oh, yeah, David White. Thank you. <laughs> and Chuck Taroni says, yes, I think I got everyone. So the minutes are approved. Right. And we only, we only had one set of minutes. And the next is just the correspondence. So commission, did we receive any correspondence uh, between the last two meetings? Uh, yes, and that is through the uh, Novus agenda, and then there have been a couple of items that were received since the agenda was posted, uh, and those are on the Google Drive, and I can talk with uh, Jennifer to get those posted as well. Um, the one significant one, and I'm not sure, Chuck, if this is where you want to put this on the agenda, is for um, the emergency certification for, uh, what was it, 46 to 48 Lake Hill? Uh, with the trees, do we want to put that here, or do we want to put that somewhere else? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll bring that into discussion. But it would be the next thing anyway. So, oh. uh, so the Lake Hill property, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we received several comments about uh, Thorndike Place as well. So which... all the correspondence uh, that we received between these two meetings is available on the on the Google Drive, and there's a link on the agenda, and you can find the agenda on the uh, town website on the calendar page. And uh, also by reaching out to Ryan Clapp. So, Chuck, could I just make a comment? Sure. The public, the Google Drive is not available to the public, so all the communications will be on the Novus agenda on the website that Chuck was telling you had to get to. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So moving on to discussions. Let's put, uh, let's do this one first since we're you kind of. You want to do the uh, hearings first or the discussions first? Sorry. So on the agenda, number two, A, is the discussions. So um, I was just going to go with the agenda. Do you have uh, the Lakeville View pictures available? And can you give a summary of what cool, uh, happened with that? Uh, so we got a call from a tree company, reached out through the uh, town website to Susan and myself and Ryan. And from that point, Ryan, why don't you take it? Yes. So um, this is for 46 to 48 Lake Hill Avenue. Uh, so they were looking for removal of two trees. Uh, so one is this large tree that you can see on the left here. Uh, it has four uh, stems coming out from the trunk, uh, all of which are rotted and in pretty poor health. Uh, and then there is also... That's another image that you can see of it. Uh, and that's just showing the proximity to adjacent cars, the street, and the house. Uh, and then there is also a dead pine out there. Oh, I keep scrolling that. Um, that is also within striking distance of uh, structures and the road. Uh, so they have requested that these uh, trees be removed. Uh, I did stop by earlier today. Uh, and they have started um, pruning the tr pruning uh, the branches on the large tree that had the four stems coming from it, and they have removed the pine tree. Um, they're also looking to remove uh, some dead branches and invasive vines, um, but that is all under uh, below the uh, twenty percent canopy removal. Um, so we did issue a, uh, let me grab that, a uh, emergency certification to this project. Uh, and I will share that right now. Uh, and so that does permit the uh, project to go uh, forward immediately. Uh, so I set a site date, uh, a start date of 1-17-2024, which was yesterday, and then uh, Assuming the commission is, you know, agreeable, I I tend to uh, let them go the full thirty days um, for that. So that is the end date of uh, 2 16, 2024. Uh, so the work to be work to be allowed is the removal of the sassafras tree with the damaged co dominant stems uh, and removal of the damaged pine trees. Uh, special conditions that were imposed initially uh, permitted the stumping and grinding of removed trees but the removal of the root ball is prohibited. Uh, within 48 hours of completion of the work, uh, they are to contact the Conservation Commission to schedule a site visit and determine if any erosion controls are necessary and to confirm compliance with the certification. Uh, and then they are to ensure that wood chips are stored outside of the 100 foot buffer zone to the resource. <laughs> um, so that was issued yesterday. Um, and so it does need ratification from the Conservation Commission. Um, and then if there's any sort of amendments or additional commission, uh, conditions that the commission is looking to uh, impose on this emergency certification. Yeah, thank Ryan, you, Ryan. Ryan can, I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. That's um, can, you, can you scroll back to the special condition? I mean, I get that the intent <clears throat> is to have erosion controls in the site inspected before the start of the work. Maybe you should say, uh, should, we, should we say commencement? instead of completion? Uh, so the idea here was the ground is pretty frozen right now. Um, and so putting erosion controls in at the current moment won't necessarily, you know, really benefit the, uh, the site. Uh, there shouldn't mm -hmm. be too much erosion coming from that. Uh, but once the snow starts to melt, that's when we might expect to see uh, additional erosion. And so, Kind of to okay. see what kind of exposed and bare soil is left after the removal of these trees. Sure. Got it. That, that makes sense. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. So, uh, David, for uh, Northeast, uh, it's like North Northern Boston Tree Service yeah. does, not, does not use cranes. So they climb the tree and mm -hmm. they just drop pieces. 
and they don't even grind stumps. So the stump's going to be close, uh, cut close to the ground. So it was determined that no uh, erosion would be needed for this job. But we did want to be prudent and check when we're called that the job's finished and then have that ability to ask for erosion if needed. So that's that's how um, we handled the erosion on this. And, you know, it's also it's pretty far away from the resource area on existing lawn. So there's a lot of roughage between where this is happening and, you know, the edge of spy plot. Um, and for all those reasons, that's why we made that determination. Are there any question, other questions about uh, <clears throat> 4648 Lake Hill? Seeing none, can I get a motion to ratify the uh, emergency cert for 48, uh, 46 and 48 Lake Hill? So moved. A second? Second. Oh, second. Oh, Mike got uh, it. Mike Gildas game. I'm, I'm too late at the game here. <laughs> uh, roll call, uh, Susan Chapnick? Yes. David White? Yes. Say David Kaplan? Yes. Mike Gildas game? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. Next on the agenda is... Um, Dudley Street escrow. So it's an amendment to extend. That's right. Let me just check again. Yep, Dudley Street. An amendment to extend the escrow agreement. Um, it was drafted by Nathaniel Stevens and Susan Chapnick. And uh, Chuck, did you want me to just give a, a very short summary of this? Or I absolutely did, and I didn't forget about you, but I was going to give the lead in. So sure. that's all. Uh, so it's an amendment to extend the escrow agreement. It was drafted by uh, Nathaniel Stevens and Susan Chapnick. And Susan Chapnick, vice chair of the Arlington Conservation Commission, will um, go over this for the commission and take any questions after she's finished. Susan. Thank you, Chuck. Okay, um, those of you who have been on the commission a while might remember that 34 Dudley has actually two orders of conditions. There was one order of condition with a prior owner and then a new order of condition. And the first order of conditions, not all the work was done. One part of the work that wasn't done was putting in stormwater management. And that was then supposed to be done by the second owner under the second order of conditions, but the Conservation Commission was concerned, what if it never happened? So we requested money be put in escrow in order to um, perform the stormwater management if the applicant of the, the new owner, the second order of conditions didn't do it. So it was kind of a insurance for us. Um, however, when we, when we put in this um, escrow agreement, it had a, um, it, it expires this year. And during this time, we had extended the order of conditions of the permit for the current owner. So now we have a disconnect between our escrow agreement expiration and the current order of conditions expiration. So I think, yes, so I think um, Ryan just put up um, <clears throat> this very simple extension of the ESCO agreement that Nathaniel and I prepared, where we're staying, where, whereas the stormwater management system hasn't yet been um, installed, as I said, and the ESCO agreement is set to expire this March, but the current order of conditions expires August 17th, 2025. We're proposing to extend the escrow agreement to the same period as the order of conditions. So it's as kind of as simple as that. Um, but if there are any questions, I or or somebody doesn't understand what I just explained, be happy to answer them. Thank you, Susan. Um, so Ron, could you take that down? Uh, I had a couple of questions, but I uh, saw them. Uh, earlier, I wanted to know if Ryan reached out to the escrow uh, uh, agreement, the applicant received the order of conditions, and if they are agreeable to this extension. I think you're on mute, Ryan. I did leave a voicemail, but I haven't heard back uh, yet. 
Okay. Uh, my second question is, did town council review the escrow agreement? Yeah, and I had sent that to uh, Claire for her to send to a town council. I never got a response back, unfortunately. So council has not re uh, reviewed this escrow agreement or escrow, escrow extension. Okay. So, Susan, uh, knowing that, what's your recommendation? So my recommendation, just so that we don't have to revisit this again, would be to ask if the commission would vote to approve this pending um, any comments from the town council or any edits from the town council. Um, when I prepared this with Nathaniel, and as everyone knows, Nathaniel is an environmental attorney, he um, didn't think it was a big deal if town council didn't look at it, but because the ESCO agreement is with the town, he, he wanted to cover all bases and have him just glance at it. Um, so if it would be agreeable to you, Chuck, I would like to take mm. a vote to approve it pending pending the um, town council's review. Sure. And what do you say about um, the applicants? Uh, so the applicant agreement. actually requested this in, in an email. Okay to David Morgan. So that may be information maybe we didn't get to Ryan Clapp. Sure. But since they asked for it in an email, I, I don't see why they would be opposed to it. Great. And I feel like we've just wrapped this up and it's it's all set. So can I get a motion to uh, approve this ESCO agreement pending town council's review? I'll Who's make a motion. Whoops. <laughs> Who got so that one? We'll say I got you, Susan. Uh, a motion to second. approve the escrow extension. I'll second. Uh, and David Kaplan. All right. Um, so Mike. what this means, um, Chuck, is that before you take a vote, since this discussion period, I just want to explain if this is um, you might give a period of a week or I don't know how long you want to give town council to comment. Um, and then if there's no comment, we already have the vote that commissioners will have to sign it. And I don't know how you want to facilitate that, but that's something we, if people come into town hall or what, it's a physical document that needs to be signed. So. Sure. So I, I don't think I would limit town council's review and okay. we could, we can talk about how to sign it after the, okay. after the vote. But I, I think that, uh, it will be at town hall yeah. And we can either do that or we can start a signature chain. But hold off on answering okay. that. All right. And we have, a, we have a vote and we have a yeah. second. And I'm going to go through the roll call. Mike killed this game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, so that's approved. And we'll wait for town council to review that, which I don't think is a too much of an ask. So that can... That can happen. Um, what's the preference of the commission? Do you want um, me to pick it up and drop it off at Susan's house who brings it down the line? Or does everyone want to go into town hall? The last person would have to bring it back to town hall. Town hall is fine with me. Town hall is fine with me too. Okay, well, yeah. let's go with town hall. Okay, that document will be available at town hall and town hall closes tomorrow at 12 o'clock. So, but you don't have to get there. We wouldn't be signing it yet because council hasn't reviewed it. Well, we can still sign it. We can sign it. They'll review it. Go yeah. anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have the um, applicant. So the applicants also have to sign it. Mm -hmm. We could all sign it, then hold it in the office, wait for review, and then send it to the applicant. Maybe that's the best way to do it. That sounds great. Okay. I'll be there tomorrow because that tomorrow works for me. Right. Huh. And if, if anybody is having problem getting to town hall during its open hour, so it's the town hall annex where the conservation commission office is, um, just email or text me separately. And I, I'm very flexible, so I could br probably bring it to one of your houses. Okay. Flexible work schedule. Thank you. Moving on. So our next thing on the agenda is um, the Mount Gilboa feasibility study update. And I don't know if Anything, uh, yeah, so here it is right here. This is the survey. So I want to let you know that the um, they uploaded the survey on January 9th. 
And um, I was, someone reached out to me from the AHCD and they wanted, I think they reached out to several people, but I, but I was fortunate enough to answer. And they wanted someone from the committee, the Mount Gilboa committee to talk at their next meeting, which is on January 25th. So I reached out to David White because he's very active in this neighborhood and David had a conflict that night. So Nathaniel Stevens has stepped in and um, I'm not sure if he sent the email re uh, reply, letting everyone know that he will be there to discuss this, if they can accommodate his before nine o'clock request. Um, so David, I'm gonna throw this to you because like I said, this is something that's in your neighborhood. Do you have anything to add, David White? Um, look at the survey. Sure, comments in. She get results a month or so, then we'll see more. More. Actually, we'll also see what Daniel learns from the meeting too. So they were mm -hmm. learning process here. Is the survey? So I asked uh, Ryan to put the survey on his signature line in his emails to to get it out there. I'm not sure if that's happened yet, but I know that it's probably went out in all the town social media. Um, Ryan, have you heard? If it's uh, active, do you know how many people have taken the survey at this moment? Well, if you look right at the top there, it says there's 117 responses. That's pretty good. So yeah. pretty decent traction so far. Yeah, that's great. 117. We got to get the word out. It's only going to be open till the end of this month. It was supposed to just be one month. Yeah, that's what it says. Survey will close on January 31st. Yeah. I've told the neighbors about it. Mm-hmm. I think we should tell everyone about it because that's a uh, that's uh, you know an area of town that everyone everyone gets to. It's also but, been on the on the town emails, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. it, they finally put it on, so that's good. All right, moving right along, uh, number C or C letter C, and this uh, agenda is the Water Bodies Working Group. We're not going to get an update. We have two votes to discuss. Uh, the first one is for a Warren article, Funding the Water Bodies Working Group. And again, I'm going to turn to David White uh, to let us know about this warrant article. This is the basic standard placeholder article. I think it's approved for the warrant. And then the um, Finance Committee figures out the, what the numbers are going to be. Next is voted on by the town. So um, this just essentially gets in place for the next stage of things. Mm -hmm. So, right. So we're hoping that the uh, town will, um, town meeting will approve the money for the management plan for this uh, water bodies fund. And um, I think yeah, the FinCom is a problem, but anyway. Yeah, we got to get by the FinCom. Do you want to give a brief update on... Uh, uh, talk about the cost of the management contract and you're just working with all the, all the, um, I guess like with Brad Barber and to try to figure out how to bring that contract down. Do you want yeah. to just give well, a little bit of that? The problem is that the um, contract proposal for Spy Pond is much more than it has been in the past. We've put together some ideas that we're going to pass on to the consultant to try to bring that cost down to a reasonable level. Because it's, as it is now, it's over our, everything's over our budget for the coming year. So we have to cut things somewhere. And we're going to see what we can do to um, at least bring the spy upon piece down. I think mm. um, reservoir is probably the same as last year. And the, also, I think Hills Pond is similar as well. But it's a, the spy upon contract that's the issue at the moment. Um, Dave Kaplan's also on the Water Bodies Working Group. Uh, Dave, do you have anything to add to David White's uh, report? Um, no, I mean, we've just been sort of picking apart the tasks in, in the proposal and just looking for opportunities to either, um, you know, or trying to figure out how they got to the number for the task and, and develop some questions that we can have a conversation with the um, with SWCA um, just to try to right size those numbers a little bit, but, you know, also looking at, you know, each task and how it supports you know, the broader goals that we've set 
uh, over the year uh, to see if there's any opportunities to, um, I guess, you know, cut, cut something here and there. So. Yeah, nothing's nothing uh, is getting any cheaper these days. So you have a you get a it's going to be hard to to find those things. But you know, I appreciate the effort and the you know, increase is expected, but this is much more than we anticipated. We beyond. All right. Okay. So we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of what you're looking into, but we'll get a report when that's that's finalized and we'll have to vote on the management plan. So um, and so David presented an uh, Warren article and we saw that on the screen and I'd like to get a vote to approve that language so we can get it ready for uh, town meeting. I move to approve it. For a second. Giving somebody a chance. All right, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yep. David Kaplan. Yes. Mike Gildesgame. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, so that's first of two things. And the second thing is our... Um, Second thing is this five bond uh, determination. So Susan, again, I'm gonna set this up a little bit. Uh, so they have a spy bond determination. And so um, this is the process in Arlington. We have an existing order of conditions, but the applicant, which is the town this time, has decided that there needs to be a change. In order to do this process, we need to determine whether this change is um, warrants a notice of intent of whether the change is sufficiently minor that it can be an amended, we can amend the order of conditions, which is existing. So that's the overview. And Susan, who knows a lot about this uh, particular item on this um, order of conditions, uh, volunteered to talk the commission through it and help us out uh, and take on any questions. So Susan, I'll throw that to you. Thanks, Chuck. So um, through uh, the process with SWCA getting a management plan for the next year um, and discussions with the Water Bodies Working Group, we realize there may be additional invasives that we need to control that we hadn't considered um, in our, our order of conditions that ex exist now. Um, one of them is Phragmites, and there may be some others. So these additional invasives may require um, alternative uh, herbicide control. So we only approved two chemicals to be used on the uh, for aquatic management of Spy Pond. One of them um, is for the curly leaf, mainly for the curly leaf uh, pondweed and some others. This is called diquat. And the other one is for harmful algal blooms. If they do pop up, we usually see at least one a year. And that's a copper-based algicide. Um, there are other herbicides. Um, we've discussed them in the past in this commission. Um, some we refuse to to consider and there have been new ones on the market and they, they all have pros and cons. We're not gonna consider them right now. What I'm just asking is, would you consider an amendment to this order of conditions to um, discuss and potentially add additional herbicides as appropriate for aquatic management? Mm -hmm. and I personally think it would be an amendment because if you um, look down, if you could scroll a little, um, Ryan, to the section that, ha there it is, I think it's 20, 21. So number, we only have one um, special condition that uh, talks about the herbicides, the two I just talked about. Um, and I think, and the rest of this is talking about other types of management and what we're doing at SpyPon. So I, I think it's appropriate to amend the OOC to cons for rather than doing a new um, notice of intent for additional herbicides. So that's that's my summary. 
Sure. And so just before we take uh, a, have a discussion or take a vote, just in Section 17 of our regulations, uh, when we, it gives us some, it lays out some structure to help us decide whether this is a um, minor uh, amendment or if it needs to go through a notice of intent. So uh, first one is that the purpose of the project has not changed, scope of the project has not increased. And the third one would be the project will still meet the relevant standards in the regulations. Four would be uh, resource areas are still protected. And the last one is the potential for adverse impacts to the resource area values will not be increased from the approved project. So no, that's, you, sure. Uh, I'm sorry, you know what? I don't know if I was looking at the right order of conditions because I'm looking at 21 and it does have um, a, it does have an herbicide for Phragmites. And I didn't think it was in there. On my version of, what's the date of this, Ryan? Looks like it's 31523. Okay. So What's the I date still you want to consider an amendment because we may consider an alternative herbicide, but I am encouraged to see, go back to 21, that we did add the um, Phragmites herbicide in here, and I didn't think it wasn't in on my draft version. So I didn't have the final version. Okay. So you see, it says, Manual direct application cut and dab of amazamox is allowed for treatment of phragmites, and my version didn't have that. So I thought we needed an amendment ASAP to treat phragmites, and we really don't. But I still think we should consider if this is an appropriate route because there are some other um, some other aquatic invasives that are being discussed by SWCA that have been cropping up that we may need an alternative Um herbicide so i'm not so we don't how do we determine to going through those five items on the list if we don't know what the next things that swca is going to uh going to ask for they they ask they ask for a potential use of priscilla core which is not approved in here so that's one they they added um mm -hmm. So was that part of your request tonight for Celicor? Well, I wasn't requesting a specific herbicide because mm -hmm. I thought we weren't talking about that. We're not going through the pros and cons. We're just asking if the addition or change of an herbicide would be considered an amendment or a new NOI. Yeah, I guess if the delivery method is the same, I... Think that would matter so the delivery methods wouldn't change so priscilla core or mox moxicore i don't know if they're both well priscilla core is more like a diquat it's 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 an aquatic one i a mass mm -hmm. box is is like a new version of glyphosate it's not glyphosate but it, it does the same thing so that's a cut and dab um for phragmites sure so we could ask for um, we could ask for a determination that uh, adding additional herbicides to the list that have the same application method that it currently exists in the order of conditions is a uh, is sufficiently minor uh, in nature and can be considered for an amended order of conditions. So if someone I think that's wants a great to, way of wording it. Yeah. Sure. So if someone wants method. to. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. maybe I can get a motion on that. And you can just say so moved. I move. Thanks, David. Can I get a second? I second. All right. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Mike Gildas game. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. Chuck Taroni says yes. Daniel's here too, I think. Oh, uh, 
Sure, Nathaniel, would you like to vote on this or would you like to abstain? I'd like to abstain. I came in only yeah. at the tail end of the discussion. Thanks, Chuck. Sorry okay. to be late. Great. Uh, Brian, did you get that uh, vote down? Do you... Yes, David Great. White, Susan Chapman. Sure. Okay. So, um, too, so now he's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, definitely past 7.30. So I'd like to hold off on any more discussions. We stopped at the park and rec and uh, we're going to move on to our hearings. Our first hearing is a request for determination of applicability for 35 Beverly Road. But as I understand it, the uh, newspaper ad did not go in um, to the to the paper uh, in time. So uh, the only thing I'm looking for with this is to continue it to our next meeting, which is uh, February 1st. So could I get a vote to continue uh, 35 Beverly Road to February 1st? So moved. A second? Second. Just going down the list, Mike Gill, this game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. Um, uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, David Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. All right. Moving on, we have a uh, request for determination of applicability for 43 Beverly Road. Uh, see if I have this whole thing. Sure. I only have half. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Here we go. So 43 Beverly Road, the public hearing will consider the application for a seasonal floating dock at 43 Beverly Road along the bank and land underwater of the Mystic Lake. And that's what I have. So, um, I know that uh, someone's here. Do, who do we have here to uh, talk about 43 Beverly Road, Ryan? Hi. Uh, oh, we have John. John Barrows here. Hi, John. Uh, you can, I don't know if you're sharing the screen, but you can turn your video on and talk. And uh, I'd like you to tell the commission about this project and sure. um, just the first by introducing yourself to the commission for the record. Uh, also, I'm here. I'm the owner. Um, uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, on, yeah. So both both just uh, introduce yourself for the record. Whoever goes first is fine. Uh, my name is John Barrows. I'm from Salem Village Consulting. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Myron Shulges uh, uh, <laughs> Jick. Um, he is the uh, property owner, um, and uh, why don't I just run through a little bit of background um, of the uh, the site and, and the um, and the structure. Um, so the uh, Sol uh, Soldier Six um, recently bought the per property back in 2022. Um, it's located at 43 uh, Beverly Road. Um, it has um, shoreline on the lower mystic lake um, when the uh, homeowners bought the property um, there was an existing um, uh, seasonal floating dock on the property um, it was uh, understood that that dock had been in existence for some 30 years and the prior owner um, had uh, received a, a, a state waterways uh, license for the dock um one of the conditions of that license was that when the uh property transferred that the new uh owner would have to uh purchase uh, no, sorry not purchase but receive a, a new license uh within a year um so we went through the uh, the process started the process uh, with the state right. waterway division to, to receive a general um a license uh, for the dock, um, you know, after its review period, you know, you, you probably actually received correspondence that we applied for that back last spring. 
Um, after some time, the uh, state uh, waterways division put the uh, application on hold, uh, asking us to receive uh, permission uh, or proof that it was approved by um, the Conservation Commission. We had kind of understood since the, the license had been around for some 30 years that uh, they had done that originally. Um, turns out we, we couldn't find any uh, existing order conditions or requests for deter negative determinations. Um, so uh, we reached out to David Morgan. Uh, David explained that that was something that the commission had um, granted him the ability to do uh, an administrative approval. Uh, so we went through that process with David, uh, received the, the you know correspondence and the documentation for uh, an administrative approval. Uh, we took that information and uh, sent it into the state. And after some time, they're, they're, to be honest, they're, they're not really quick to, to respond. Um, they finally came back and said, well, that, that doesn't suffice. We, we either need a negative determination or order conditions um, with the you know official form work uh, for the Wetlands Protection Act. So um, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, you know, so we, we filed for the negative determination uh, with, with the uh, commission. Um, and as you can see, the, you know, the dock is a, you know, 40 by 20 foot, uh, aluminum dock. Um, it's, um, only anchored, uh, by a couple of hinges, uh, on a, at a masonry wall along the shoreline. Uh, it's a seasonal dock. It's uh, taken out typically, um, you know, in the late fall and put back in the spring. Uh, it's, uh, it, the previous owner, uh, secured it to the, Shoreline line uh, during the off season. Um, I, I apparently, it uh, I, uh, the, the commission did a little site walk, and um, it hasn't been removed um, as of yet. Um, Myron is doing a lot of traveling overseas, and I think it's probably one of the things on his list to do. Um, and but anyway, that's that's where where we are at, and um, I think Ryan also uh, requested a little. Uh, uh, operations and maintenance um, uh, plan, and I think uh, I put put that together yesterday and sent it off to him. And I believe that's to be on record. Sure, yeah. uh, Susan. I'm not sure if you want to take it from here. Sure. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, John. That was that was a good overview. Um, Ryan Clapp and I did a site um, wow. walk of this um property um the owner obviously was was overseas so we didn't get to have a discussion but ryan could you put up your pictures and then um maybe your site notes um maybe the pictures probably are more illustrative and we can just talk about the site notes so it's a very steep slope um all the um the backyards on beverly that face Lower Mystic Lake um, have really steep backyards. Um, and um, so there are steps walking down to the water. The banks um, in, so this is one area looking, whoops. Oh. Yeah. So it's going a little too fast for me to explain. Oh, just um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so this is, this is um, the edge of the property is kind of a uh, little past where that tree is. Um, and you can see a canoe on the right. Uh, that's and you could see the the bank. That's the bank to Mystic Lake. Okay, next picture maybe is the dock. Okay, so this is a patio area that looks like it's been existing. If they say the dock's been there for thirty years, this patio area has likely been there for thirty years. Um, it it is not permitted, um, but the dock was I don't think came before the commission. Um, either. Um, it, it is older. Um, there's moss growing through it. Um, and you can see that there's some stone work uh, on the edge of the bank there. And then do you have a picture of the um, dock? There's the dock. Okay, so the dock right now is just tethered um, to the side um, of the bank with ropes. So it was not removed. Um, my understanding, um, and Chuck, you tell me if I'm wrong because you're the one who figured this out, that if you get a general uh, permit for a dock, uh, it's considered that it's taken out in the wintertime, um, seasonal, 
means, you know, take it out in the winter, you put it back in, you know, in in late spring, early summer. Um, there are no dates on that, but it's not supposed to stay in the water. And can you show a few more pictures, Ryan? Whoops, that one's sideways. There we go. Um, Okay, that's just showing what the bank looks like there near where <clears throat> the dock goes out from. So you can see it there tethered to the side. That's the canoe again. So there's a canoe. This is a tree that looks like it was cut. Um, again, it's been that way a long time. It does look like it was diseased. Um, it's nice that there's a, a, a snag there. That's about eight foot, an eight foot snag. Um, and this is a small, um, probably a storage unit. We didn't get to ask the owner because he wasn't there. Um, that's within the 25 foot uh, footprint of, of the bank. I think that's it, is that right? Okay, and um, Ryan wrote up a short memo on our site visit notes, just explaining what I just said to you for the record. Um, and we did ask for an operation and maintenance plan, as Ryan said, um, to ask, um, you know, when is the dock coming in? When is it coming out? Is there any maintenance that needs to be done? How is that done? Um, so are there questions from commissioners? If, if I could just add one thing. Um, sure. So there was, um, you know, we did some research because we thought that uh, the dock had been permitted through the uh, the commission and, and there was um, a uh, order of conditions for um, work along the shoreline. Um, I, it, it was kind of vague on what it what it was, but there was one that was received by the previous owner. Looks like the date was uh, April eighteenth, ninety six. Um, Okay, it I'm sorry if I didn't it find says, that. It yeah. says lands, landscaping um, and construction of path to the water. So um, so there had been some permitting there okay. by the owner. Thank you. That's yeah. probably in a physical file somewhere. It's not in our electronic files. Yeah, it was 96, so it was close. Okay. I see Nathaniel Stephen has his hand up. Thanks. Yeah, just I, I see the operation and maintenance plan. I didn't, is it in the Google Drive? I'm because I was looking on the, I, I, I'm getting the documents through, through the posted agenda for the public, so I'm not. Yes, we just gotten anymore. that yesterday. I don't think it was posted. The uh, okay. and just gave it to us. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Can then can someone go through it because it's just saying inspect uh, maintenance, and I'm not sure about inspect for what. I mean, I guess what's the what's the purpose of this? And maybe it says it down oh, below, yeah. but. What, if I if I could Thanks. jump in there, um, so part of the the waterways permit is is that you're you're supposed to keep it in in you know good working condition. Okay. So inspection would be that basically it's it's holding together in a suitable condition, I guess. You know, if it's starting to be in disrepair, then it should be repaired. Um, but other than that, it's aluminum, so it's not that it gets refinished or anything like that. It's uh, you know it's pretty straightforward, kind of prefabricated. Mm -hmm dock so uh, okay i guess maybe my suggestion would be then to add for the maintenance requirements add something to that end of the sentence to say sort of explain what john just said the homeowner you know shall inspect and it, you know to ensure the dock is you know in good condition and no pieces are falling off or just something yeah to add. I, I think the second page has it on it if you okay you go down yeah the dock maintenance requirements ah okay Can add, you know. Yeah, good. Thanks. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. And then, Susan, I don't think it's, uh, respectfully, I don't think it's really our jurisdiction as to whether they're complying with the general license, um, mm -hmm. Chapter 91 license. But if we want, I guess if we issue, a, they're seeking a negative determination, a condition could be to have it entirely out of the water for you know, the winter period or six months out of the year or some 
some time period. So that would be the way to address that. Thank you. That yeah, my concern yeah. was um, shading and things like that, because it is right, right on the bank. And we do have aquatic vegetation that grows in the spring. And um, yeah. Right. So yeah, that was my concern. Thank you, Nathaniel. Chuck? Sure. Yeah, John, that second page uh, comes, comes through. Ed, and Nathaniel, I was going to ask, since it said that, I think it said November 15th, that it would be out of the water, and then May something first. Maybe I get those reversed, but, um, oh, there it is right there. Yeah, November 15th and uh, each year, and then when we put back in no earlier than May 1st, would would that be sufficient instead of having that condition or restating this, um, that time that it seems to be out of the water? I think it would be best to have it within the paperwork, okay. especially since it's such a simple requirement. I think there's room on the form to include that, if I remember. There sure is. Um, I had another question. Uh, and so, so, uh, uh, Mass Waterways um, is issuing the dock permit, but the Conservation Commission is issuing a uh, request for determination of applicability. And the running time for this type of permit is usually three years. And I just want everyone to understand that if we don't, in, in my opinion, if we don't extend that or make a comment that it's in perpetuity, then we should look at it again. I feel uh i don't feel very comfortable about approving this in perpetuity except that one thing that i know is true is that if the owner changes that dock in any way they have to get a new permit so this process would happen all over again um with that being said i think that uh one of my questions to john would be are those planks on top also aluminum I couldn't make that out. Yes. But the, the decking. Yeah, the, the decking. Deck, I think it's the decking is aluminum. It looked like. Oh, on the on the dock itself? Yeah, yeah. there was a picture yeah. of that. Yeah. Okay, so that's it's all decking. So yeah. and when it comes out of the water is I understand there's a steep bank there. Are you putting it on that um bluestone runway that's next to the Mystic, is that where, where it's going, or is it not actually getting out of the water uh, lately? Well, uh, I know, you know, Myron is uh, new to the, the property, so I'll, I'll let him speak, but I, I know it is uh, a very heavy uh, dock, so you know, it would have to be pulled up um, probably mechanically onto the uh, slope, above the slope. And is the is that patio area in the floodplain? I would say probably yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, so this general permit, but it floats, so it's it's not like it would be filling floodplain. Let's put it that way. Right, but I yeah. right, I, I unless it's anchored, I'm just worried about it. You know, getting pulled away with the floodwaters. But I... right, yeah. With that, I mean, obviously, that's uh, probably be chained or, or something that would keep it. Um, you know, and that's part of the reason why it's taken out every year is, is you know, to be honest, it's um, uh, as ice flows and what have you at certain times that yank it out and break the uh, connections and cause, uh, you know, disrepair to it. So that's that's the reason to, to, to disconnect it. And yeah, the previous owner told me is that, uh, mm -hmm. so basically during the summer, it's connected with these uh, hinges to the wall. And uh, she told me that in, uh, during the winter, she just connected it and tied it with a rope to the coast so it can kind of float freely. Uh, the dock itself is pretty heavy, so pulling it out would be quite a labor. And as John said, we would probably need to have some kind of mechanical tool to accomplish that. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure that tool would then need to be built into the patio or something like that because it cannot be you know like i i it would it take quite a few people to pull it to pull it out it's it is yeah very heavy how deep is it at, at that location right next to uh, it's about yeah it's about a 
foot or so, maybe a little bit more than a foot, something like that. Mm -hmm. And how about at the end of the dock on average? The depth. At the end of the dock is pretty you mean when it's when it's vertically yes. uh when yeah. it's attached? Yes, uh it's yeah. pretty deep, yeah. I can just about stand there. Okay. So right. um I, I just will make a comment that a neighbor of yours has also requested a um an RDA for a dock um that they have not yet installed. And in in their um search for this, the company that's going to install the dock will also put it in and pull it out every year for them. Um, so that, they, because obviously they're getting an aluminum one as well and it will be too big for them to do on their own. So I'm just giving you that information. Okay. All right, so just give me a few minutes, uh, please. I know everybody wants to jump in, but I had a few questions. Um, so I'm concerned for a couple of things. This general permit requires the dock to come out during the season. Um, it doesn't state a date, but it, but we know that it needs to come out. That doesn't mean you can't get a chapter 91 permit that doesn't, that allows the, the dock to stay in place. It's just that this one requires it to come out. Um, I did make a call, uh, about this, uh, because it did seem to be something that the commission Sometimes, uh, at least when I was on the when I'm on the commission, I'm not sure where we're supposed to be with these dock permits. So I understand that we're looking at this dock through uh, the lens of the Wetlands Protection Act on our own and bylaw. And so some of my concerns are, if you left it in the water, we would have some scouring going on. We might have some shading going on. We might have some. Uh, erosion that happens each year, and those those things would concern concern me. So, impacts to land underwater and bank and ice scouring um, are things that I'm concerned about. And again, I didn't think they were going to be an issue because in your the right on the first page it says seasonal floating dock. So I'm assuming this thing comes out. I just didn't know when or how that process happened or what, but it sounds like it's not coming out. It sounds like it's only going to be tied to the shoreline. So if that's the case, I don't think you have the right permit. Um, well, actually, it's the same permit with the with waterway spot. It's a WW24, so it's whether it stays in or, or comes out. So if, they, if there was an actual physical dock as well as a, 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 a float that came at the end, You'd still be going under the same permit. Can you permit. state the section that that's in WW twenty four? It's it's the it, it's the form, Chuck. It's the it's the general license certification form BRP. The form is BRP WW twenty four that you apply um, for the license. And <laughs> I can say the Chapter ninety one licenses. There, there are different types of permission you get under Chapter ninety one, and this mm. general license certification is a newer creature but like getting a 30-year license one of the prerequisites is to get your permission under the wetlands protection act prior to dep completing the license or signing off and it seems like that's as john explained that's what happened to them as dep said you need to get concom sign off either an order of conditions or a negative determination yeah but when i called dep and we talked about this exact permit they told me they were supposed to come out of the water. Oh, really? So oh, this... I'm, that, this is where I'm confused. And oh, they okay. said there's different no, okay. permits for for different things. But John said that it it's it's on the permit. I, I... But I guess yeah, it, I mean to it's... us it doesn't matter, right? It's I think we should, as you said, we're looking through the Wetlands Protection Act lens. So even if we, you know, we could say keep it out of the water longer than the required mm -hmm. license, or keep it under shorter, but they still have to. Right. I think we should. Yeah, I think that it. particular license covers both. You know, that's I think the way to, to look at it. So, um, but because it was a it was a removable uh, float, we you know we put in checked off that it was seasonal. And that was PRP W twenty four. Is that? I mean, I must have it here. You twenty four. Yeah. I'm looking for 
John, you don't have the registry citation for the uh, general license for Middlesex County, do you? I'm trying to find it online. Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Um, I had it on the web page at one point. Every, everything's done through that uh, e portal now. Yeah. Chuck, well, Mike I, yeah. has a comment. Did you want to? No, I'm done. I, I think that if we, we, I would feel more comfortable with conditions on this uh, application. And if we're willing to ask for it to come out of the water, um, you know, that would be, that's where I'm at. Mike? Yeah, I just wonder if uh, Chuck's concerns wouldn't be addressed in the O and M requirements by instead of saying uh the uh be unhinged uh and rehinged to say removed. Uh in other words it says currently it shall be disconnected from its hinged connection and uh could it be said to be unhinged and removed from the lake. Would that cover it? Or does it have to be the actual language of the permit itself? I think it should be both, but I think that's a good point that you raise. It should be there, and then it should be a, a, a um, condition of the determination, in my opinion. Uh, sorry, I just have a brief question. Uh, there are some like 10 or 15 other docks at that exact lake, which are neither unhinged or removed from the lake during the winter. You're saying they went for a different approval process? No, they might not be within... The town of Arlington, and we can only they deal with in the town of Arlington, yeah. And we can only deal with what's in front of us. So that's unfortunate. There's just some other decks out, uh, docks out there that uh, are not, um, I guess, you know, following the rules that um, were set out when the, when they came to the conservation commission. If they did, and when they got their license uh, from DEP. I also had um, a question about the three-year period, Chuck, and your interpretation that this would have to come back. My understanding of the RDA is it's a three-year period to do the work. So let's say this doc wasn't there. You know, so it's we're doing an RDA, it might be a negative determination, they could build the dock, they have these conditions. So to me, I look at it like, okay, if somebody asked us an RDA for a fence, um, it's a three year RDA, if we have a negative determination, and we have a um, special condition that says the fence has to be four feet, four inches above the ground, so turtles can go under whatever, but they don't have to come back every three years. That fence still exists. So I guess I don't understand the three-year concern that you have. Yeah, I I, I hear your point um, that it seems like the three years would be during the construction. But um, you could just simply solve that by saying that this will run concurrently with the Chapter 91 permit or... I, I was saying before in perpetuity, but you could say that. And if they ever had to reapply, the state would send it back to the Conservation Commission. Right, uh, right. So, uh, you know, that... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes I, sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's not a problem, uh, talking that through. Okay. Yeah, I believe these general license... So what happened is, so G DEP issued these general licenses. They record them in the registry, and then people apply to actually to sort of uh, join onto them. So depending, so those licenses that are recorded, there should be one from Middlesex County. And I think those are 15 years, maybe it's a 15 year period. So DEP at some point is gonna have to renew that license. And then I think it'll be interesting. I think then everyone will have to reapply to the new license, I'm not sure, but it, it has a shorter license, shorter term than a traditional chapter 91 license. Yeah, if that helps uh, allay Chuck's concern. Yeah, it's my no, understanding as well that um, you know it's it, there is a going to have to be a reapplication at some point down the road. Mm -hmm. The present one was a thirty year, um, 
that that was considered an interim uh, general license. Okay. <laughs> So I guess where are we in terms of, of having the dock removed? Uh, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards that being a condition. I think it's just goes to the ownership of a, having a dock. I mean, there are, it sounds like the neighbor next door has located someone who can come and, you know, install it and take it out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's in the O&M. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I assume that that means that that's what they're proposing to do. I mean, I'm hearing trepidation about how difficult it is, or you know, conversations about that. But I mean, it's in, it's in the O and M, so right. And, 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 and that's why that's not the depth. You can certainly get you know, four people in standing in a foot or two of water to to lift it out if needed. It only says about being unhinged, uh, disconnected from its hinge connection. Doesn't say anything about removal. In yeah. The, yes, we need to amend that language if that's what we want to do. That's well, a good we, point, Mike. Yeah, yeah, good, we, put it, we put in the storage storage for the dock shall be along the shore of the property. So um, I, I guess, you know, the thought was, is that was just going to be slightly pulled up and secured. Um, so it wasn't that it was going to be taken off property, you know? No, just up on the bank, up on the patio. Nah. There. Yeah, John, what I, my recollection from my conversation and I was, um, you know, feverishly writing things down, but it seems like a couple of points have come up during this discussion that I think that there's a difference between inland permits and um, non-title. Yeah, non-title. So yeah, this is this is non-title. Because my my original questions to to talk, go ahead and talk to Chrissy Hops was to um, ask her about this term seasonal because I couldn't find it in the regulations. And so it, you know, I was mystified by where do I find a definition for seasonal? And so I reached out and we had a conversation. So I, I do think that this permit, um, and I know that we reviewed the two that are coming in front of the Arlington Conservation Commission. I asked her about seasonal and, and that was one of the requirements that it needs to come out of the water. So this might be something you want to check on. Well, so I have, um, I, I don't know if I have it on to share with you, but they have a flow chart that you go down through as far as under what type of permit you apply for. So you reach a point where, um, you know, it talks about the size of the dock and then if it's if, where it's located in relation to the property line. So if it's less, it's more than 25 feet, um, you know, if it's four by, if it's under so many square feet, and it's so many feet from a property line, they, they throw you into um, uh, into one cat, you know, in the flow chart, you go towards the WW24. And then as you go down, it asks, you know, if the structure is limited to 300 square feet, and you say yes, and then it's, it, is the structure a seasonable remove? And you say yes, and it throws you back into the WW24. So it's a flow chart of a bunch of different categories that end up into the same same license that makes sense just just you know what what the process was that we went through to, to apply for it all right um susan yes <laughs> i i i i agree with mike that i think this language in the for the seasonal storage needs to be clarified because it can that second sentence or third sentence could be read to say um because it says it will be secured oh i'm sorry or the fourth sentence sorry it's small writing storage of the dock will be along the shore of the, pro of the subject property and i guess that's looks like it where it is now the photo that ryan and susan took I mean, that's along the shore of the property. I guess you could also interpret that as out of the water on the sh along the shore of the property, right? So I think it needs to be clearly stated if the commission wants it to be out of the water to say it shall be removed out of the water, you know, and can be stored along along the shore of the property, you know, on the shore of the property, I guess not along the shore, but on the shore, along the mm -hmm. shoreline, uh, but out of the water, if that's what we want. Yeah, if it, if it could get up onto that uh, bluestone like runner that that's there, that would be that would be best. I mean, I, I guess it's in floodplain, but um, it's armored. 
and it would be pretty hard to get it anywhere else. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'd like to leave that open for the, the homeowner so that they didn't have to hire somebody and, and you know have to float it downstream someplace and, and have it moved. Uh, you know, I think that's would be a better option. <laughs> I agree. I'm fine. And, and as you said, it's probably in the homeowner's interest as well to tie it down um, for the, if, if the water does get look like it's going to flood or, or if they're before they travel again, in case the flood waters do go up while they're away. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Myron had spoken to the, like he mentioned that uh, he had spoken to the um, previous homeowner in, in the past 30 years. That's that's pretty much the way they've handled it. They just tied it off to the shoreline there. So he assumed that that would be sufficient. All right, so hopefully we're not talking about two different things because the commission's saying it's coming out. And well, if that's what the commission wants, then that's, that's what we'll, we'll have to put into the conditions. Okay. So well, Chuck, should we, should we take a um, mm -hmm. temperature of the commissioners to see if that's what we want to do with these types of docs? I, I feel it should come out, but I, I haven't heard from everybody. I don't yeah, think I've heard from everybody. I mean, and, and John, you were talking quickly, explaining sort of the flow chart and the process that you went through. And you, it, it sounded like you said that, you know, you clicked the button that said it was seasonal means that it comes out on a seasonal basis, correct? So is that mm -hmm. the implication of the of the license too? Well, that's you know that's just the the the, the way they put you through the form work. Um, so I don't necessarily, it, it's, it, it ends you at, back at the same point uh, in the same license, but so I don't know if it actually gets word into, into the license language. I think it's just, they, they just try to figure out, they, they try to pigeonhole certain types of docks and situations, I think. Some docks are, are bigger, but can stay in, and they still qualify for the WW2. Some are small uh, and are close. It has, I think it has more to do where it's located in relation to the property lines, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, if it's, if it's a, the bigger dock and it's close to the property line, you know, it, it, it goes under a certain category, but if it's a smaller dock and it's, you know, further away from the property line, it gets, you know, <coughs> back into, a, into, into another category. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. But I guess my temperature, I guess, regardless of it being more labor to do so, I think it serves the resource better having taken it out, you know, seasonally and uh, placing it on that armored portion out of the water. Uh, on, on the shoreline than it does staying in tethered to the, you know, still in the water, but just tethered to the shoreline. It's also tethered to a tree. It's a very big tree, so it hasn't been harmed by it yet. I think out is better for the resource area. All right. Mike, Mike did you, um, what's your opinion of whether Doc should come out or not for the well, resource I, area. I think if uh, you, if there is concern about uh, impact to the uh, piece of uh, the lake that's under the dock because of shading or whatever, which I I think it's a minimal problem uh, because I don't think this you know in that winter period I don't think shading is a big issue for critters or for plants uh, because uh, nothing much is growing during the winter. So I, I would not be too concerned about that unless there's some specific issues that someone can bring up. Yeah, so uh, according to Alicia Galen, uh, some of the things you need to look at, and she's our circuit writer here in the Northeast. Um, she says one of the couple of things that you wanna look into is ice scouring and uh, impacts to land underwater and bank. And she also uh, wants you know, went through the process, trying to educate myself on this application and reached out to those two sources. Um, <clears throat> so her recommendation was not to have it in the water, but I also feel like that's where DEP is also, that they're saying it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chrissy said that it doesn't tell you a date, but it does call it seasonal. So it should come out of the water. Um and I think that's where we're at. I would see this going, you know, two ways. You're going to get a determination from the commission that tells you that it needs to come out of the water for the same dates or different dates that's in there, usually December 1st through sometime for the first thaw. Or you can continue 
sorry, Susan, but if I could just explain this, yeah, okay. or you could continue, do some more research, come back for the, something the commission can, uh, can you know, uh, understand about the seasonality of this dock, and we could proceed from that point. Are you asking the applicant now? Yes, I am, John. Okay. This is yeah, for, I, directed I, well, to you. I, I don't want to speak for Myron, but, you know, I, I, the intent was that it was in a seasonal dock that it was going to be, you know, taken off of its anchors every, every year. So it does fall under that that category. And that's, you know, you know how it went through the, um, you know, the waterways permit process. So I, I assume that that's the way we want to go, whether it. it's removed from, you know, its anchors and, and removed seasonally. And I, okay. I will say um, to the owner to Marin, um, you know, we, we do come across in the town of Arlington unpermitted projects, including docks. Um, and it happens and we can't be everywhere all at once. We're volunteers, <laughs> um, all of us. So we when something comes in front of us, we try to do the right thing for the resource area and consistent with the regulations at that time. Um, and we try to be consistent, but we can't catch everything if somebody has an, an unpermitted dock and never went through this. So I'm sorry about that if you feel that this is um, unfair. I will say that we do have another dock permit coming up, which we've said, and we we will go through the same exact process and the same exact discussion. Okay, so. thanks for explaining that. I did a quick search on uh, Google while you were talking about it. it. Seems that this particular dock is maybe up up to six hundred pounds, uh, and there will be impact on the on the patio and on the ground when I take it out, right? Well, that's interesting. So mm -hmm. should we consider the impact of a 600 pound dock on the bank? Mm. Now, I didn't think about that before, Chuck, but that is a concern. I didn't realize it was that heavy. Yeah, I, I'm I'm back to the same spot. So from what I've mm -hmm. heard from Chrissy that um, it has, it's, there it's is a permit that out. will allow the dock to stay in the water. But it's a different permit. This is not the permit. Okay. I, I would suggest just going back, doing your research again, reaching out to DEP uh, and and coming back to the commission because if it can stay in the water, then then that's great. Everyone's happy. But the seasonal dock, from what I heard, has to come out of the water. Um, and I think that's the way the commission is leaning at this moment, even though it's 600 pounds. Um, and I realize that it hasn't, been, hasn't come out in 30 years. I just think that there's a permit out there that, and I did ask that exact question because I originally said, what's up with the seasonal dock permit? And that's just one of many permits that they have for uh, docks. Yeah, right. And well, Chuck, sorry, I, again, we, we don't administer chapter 91. So I don't think we need to find out what chapter 91 is saying about whether the dock is seasonal or not. Again, I think we need to consider the things that Alicia said, because those more pertain to Wetlands Protection Act jurisdiction mm. and having the dock, you know, uh, removed for those reasons that she said. Um, I, you know, I, again, our, our, well, we're not issuing a permit, but still, our jurisdiction is not Chapter 91. So it doesn't matter what, again, what Chapter 91 thinks about this being a seasonal dock or not. If they don't, if the homeowner doesn't comply with the general license certification, then that's up to the waterways division, Chrissy and her division of DEP to go to uh, take enforcement if they want or deal with that issue. It's not up to us to um, ensure compliance with that Chapter 91 license or permission. We're concerned about what are the impacts on the wetland resource areas, land underwater, potentially the bank here, um, and all those things that Alicia was talking about, because Alicia's in the wetlands program, mm. and which is what we administer. And we also have our bylaw. So I think that if we want it taken out seasonally, we should have wetland related reasons, not chapter 91 reasons. Yeah, I was only thinking that the requirements would have it moored out in deeper water. But 
and that's not on the table at this moment. So um, understood. I think that if it's moored to the uh, area that um, was suggested, we're going to have impacts to the bank, land underwater, scouring, all the above. And um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just a question about the bank too. Is that uh, I saw the stone wall? Is that armored all the way down in you know from the shore to the to the water? So is there like a, a armor that if the dock were left in place, as it's you know if, as ice flows come in and and it would it would the dock itself start damaging or scouring the shoreline with wave action and. Uh, That's a good question. Um, could you put up those pictures again, Ryan? Um, the one where it shows parallel to the. Because yeah, I mean, no, no one at six hundred pounds now. I'm wondering if it's going to be more damage to the to the shore taking it's it. It's armored where it is. So where yeah. where it's tied off. So it's off of its little mooring thing, but tied. Um, where it's tied and it's tied to a tree on one end, um, and it's tied to the concrete on the other end. That is armored. There is other parts of this property that are not armored. You see it ends there, mm -hmm. but that's not where the dock is sitting. So mm -hmm. you are correct that where it's sitting in the water is armored. But you see okay. that rope? Now that rope, so the dock can move a little bit. And you see where that rope is? I mean, I don't know if you can make this picture bigger, Ryan, but um, that's the one end of the dock. And that's that's not armored right there. Mm -hmm. So the armoring almost makes the whole edge of the dock, but the dock could move a little bit because you see how that rope slack that would yeah, allow the dock uh, to move. Yeah. Yeah. The dock actually does move quite a bit, actually, even yeah. during a single day when it's tied to the tree. So right. I don't think the shading in particular would be an issue because it actually moves quite a bit even in a given day. Right. So, um, but the fact that it moves means it moves past the armored part of the bank as well. If that's your question, David. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'd be open to consider leaving it in the water just based on the potential impacts of taking it, you know, taking it out, putting it back in just to the to the bank un, un, unimpacted mm -hmm. portion of the bank. Um, mm -hmm. If it can be tethered in a way that the most most of the dock can abut the arm, the existing armored portion of the shoreline. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, just one more point is uh, that um, in the spring, uh, the thing that you're seeing right now that's on the edge of the lake, it grows in this like a uh, bunch of nice bushes like irises and so on, which also not serve the purpose not only to be nice, but actually protect the shore. So whichever dates we pick to take it out it should be before that thing starts growing. You see what I mean? You Are you talking about in kind of in front of that tree? Uh, yeah, along like the shore. Uh, everywhere along the shore, there are like these uh, bushes, like irises and stuff like that, that actually protect the shore from, you know, like the dirt from falling into the, mm -hmm. the into the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever dates we pick to take the dock out, should we, it should be before they start growing, it's, which is usually, I think first of May is probably okay. So I don't know where that leaves us because I, I started this thinking seasonal dock, it's got to come out. But now I'm thinking 600 pound dock impact on bank erosion coming in and out. I'm concerned, maybe more concerned than having it sit there. Yeah, uh, not the 600 pound thing is I did a very quick search on, on Google of a similar dock that they sell in Home Depot. So I should double check that particular number, but I do know it's heavy. Right. The The only thing I'm thinking is, is again, a, a neighbor who is going to do this was having a company come down and pull it in and out. I don't know how they were man, going to manage that. Maybe they had a little forklift or something. But how, how, how are they going to get a forklift here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because you have such well, a steep... Uh, I can, I, can speak. I, have, I have friends that have docks down the Cape and um, there's... there's been up in Gloucester as well, and there's just companies that come along and they they just float and they connect them all and they take a boat and they run them you know to a dock and they get lifted out and they're stored for the season. In doing. Gloucester, there's other, there's other people down the Cape that they have come alongs on trees and they just 
they just pull them right up onto shore for the for the winter. So these different. But they they come with a boat. You're saying because I mean, can they come with a boat onto a Mystic Lake? I mean, are there such boats on Mystic Lake? I, I'm not sure to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a boat ramp, is there? I mean, the other thing is I've seen people do is float them to a boat ramp and then pull them out on a trailer, but I don't think right. there's a boat ramp on the lower mystic to do that. But yeah, you would know better than I would, yeah. Not being a resident. Um I just think for, for new docks, we just better make sure that they're light enough to be able to if, if they're gonna be seasonal, it should be easy in, easy out. Right. And I guess that would be that would be a condition I would want in the determination to say if this dock gets replaced, then you've got to come before us again, because presumably I would expect that a, a guess that a lighter dock might be a different different approach. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of different systems. Some of the newer ones probably, you know, they have posts in, in the water and maybe yeah. they, they just get anchored up above uh, water level during the during the winter so they don't get damaged. So. I think there's many different systems out there. I, I thought there was some condition that you shouldn't anchor them into the water. Well, that, right. that there, there are issues with the anchor. You're right. I mean, there's issues with putting anchors on on the ground because the chains drag, um, the connectors drag on the bottom, and that's not good for the benthic habitat either. So. They each yeah, have their pluses and minuses. Well, that that's when you get into the other waterways permits too. So yeah, uh, right, right. If you're putting in posts, yeah, uh, fixed, you got uh, pilings, right. So, um, so I don't know where that leaves us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either because I, I mean, I, it seems like we're making a decision based on the weight of the dock rather than yeah, on the, and we don't have a verified technology. weight of the dock. So right. I, I'm almost tempted to go back to my original and say, you know, negative determination and and put it's a seasonal dock and it has to come out. And sorry, it's so heavy, but it may not be. We don't have any. We don't have right. verification of the the weight of it. We just Right. I mean, and it's not in the materials that, hmm. that were submitted. Yeah, I apologize. I'm not sure what the, the weight would be. No, and as John said, you could maybe come along and, and two, two strong people could, could pull it out or, or flip it out, uh, flip it on, you know, on a deck side onto the patio area. I don't know, but it's. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's ways to do it. It's just not, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> no, but. Okay, I'll figure it out. Yeah, again, that's yeah, you know, but it comes with the privilege of, of living on the waterfront. I'm afraid it's a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful um, area, really. They yeah, when we went down first, there, beautiful world problem. View. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, view. right, right. Yeah, so. yeah, really nice. Okay, um, I'm gonna make a motion to okay. issue a negative determination with the conditions that we discussed, which is removing the dock from. Having to dock out of the water from, I guess, they November fifteenth to April May first. May first, yeah. Okay. Did you want to make that earlier than May first, or are you okay with May first? Um. Uh. Yeah. Sometimes I put it back uh, even later, but uh, maybe fifteenth of April or something like that. Just to make that's sure. okay. I think any time after the shore, we're sure there's no frost. What What do you think, Nathaniel? Because you made the motion. Uh. I'm I'm fine with okay. with uh, April fifteenth. Okay. And we had another condition to oh, revise the mate the O and M plan to make sh make it clear that it's going to be stored on the shore out of the water for those for those time periods. Okay. And Did you want to? Yeah. yeah you condition? were talking about if they uh, replace the dock, you would want to have them come back to the commission to make sure that it was. Going to be no. I, modern, I think now that dock. no. I think uh, if it's going to be out of the dock, it, uh, if it's going to be out of the dock. If it's going to be out of the water for that time period, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what the dock material is. I I think they need to come back if they enlarge the dock for sure. Which would, would they chapter ninety one would probably trigger that anyways. But we're issuing a determination on a specific sized dock. So if they enlarge a new one, we could say no, no, no. You got to come back for another. Uh, have us look at this again. I second Nathaniel's um, motion.
Okay. Um, okay, so. I think so. I'll find a way to take it out of the water. Uh, I didn't quite okay. catch the part about the three years. We're, sorry, we need to vote first. Uh -huh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, and no and discussion. wait. Um, I made a mistake. Um, we didn't we didn't open public comment. Oh, for the hearing. Right. Okay. So that right. was my error. Sorry about that, Nathaniel. We got so far into the discussion. So, um, Chuck, can can I open public comment? Sure, sure. I, I'm assuming you're still running this. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, if there's a member of the public that would like to make a comment on this hearing for a determination of applicability for this seasonal doc, um, you can use the raise hand function if you're on Zoom. Um, and it's, it's, let's see if I see anybody. Tell me if I'm missing anybody, Ryan, because sometimes I don't see all the little boxes. Do you I don't see anybody's see anybody. hand up? No? Nope. No hands. No hands. Okay. So I'm going to officially close the public comment period and go back to a motion from Commissioner Nathaniel Stevens um, for negative determination. And he had stated three, uh, two special conditions. Uh, one was on um, dates of the seasonal dock, install no earlier than April 15th and remove no later than November 15th every year, and to revise the O&M plan um, to make it clear that the dock is coming out of the water onto the shore. Did I get those right, Nathaniel? Yes, thanks. Yes. And then, and then was there a second to the motion? It you was did. you, Susan. <laughs> I did the second. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's getting it's late. Susan. Yeah. Getting late. Okay. And then and and I guess now um is there any further comment from commissioners? Any further discussion? So I just wanted to explain mm -hmm. that we did talk about a three year, but that was talked through. So that's not part of this, that's not going to be part of this permit. Uh, just so you, you understand that. So we talked that through and this will be, this will run, uh, in conjunction with your chapter 91 permit. If you have to get that again, you're going to have to come back to the conservation commission. So it could be another three years or maybe in 2030 when the general permit is, uh, expires. Right. So, so it'll run with your chapter 91 permit, yeah. with your waterways permit. Is, is, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, I believe yeah. it is 15 years, yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we should do a vote then? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Uh, David White. Yes. Mike Gildeskane. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Chuck Taroni. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. So sorry that took so long. We had to talk through a lot, um, but you'll get a negative determination with those conditions and that should satisfy the um waterways permit okay, thank you very much for taking the time uh to resolve this uh, uh i just have a very brief uh, completely unrelated question i heard in the beginning of the meeting you were discussing uh, uh getting uh, doing something about the invasive species in spy pond which i think is fantastic uh it turns out there are also invasive species in lower mystic lake i was wondering if there is any plan to do something about those so that's very interesting. And I I, I, um, I will just say there are um, neighbors of yours um, that have formed groups of themselves to do aquatic um, management. And then they come to the commission to ask for a permit. So if you're interested in that, um, you can contact Ryan Clapp, the conservation administrator, and we can um, give you a copy of what they've done before. Um, the permits are usually for three years, um, and, and, and they have stipulations on what kind of management needs to be done. So the Conservation Commission permits that, but we don't, as a town, do it ourselves. The individual residents do it on Mystic Lake, because Mystic Lake is so large. Um, and some residents choose to do it, and some residents choose not to. Um, okay, and, and I forget, Susan. Is that does that go through DCR as well as the, or is that just through a consortium? Isn't DCR the owner, and they have to get permission through them 
to do the work? Um, I'm just misremembering. No, it's a group of neighbors. Dr. Yeah. Braun was the neighbor on the west, on the non-DCR side, David. Yes. Uh, so they don't need permission from DCR is my recollection. Okay, thank you. Okay, is thanks it considered a great pond? Yes. It is a great pond. It yes. is, yeah. So well, no signatures are owned by DCR. I'm sorry? Uh, so you, might need, you might need to get a, a sign off from DCR just at least to do the work. I think there's an exception in the regs about if you're on a great pond or Commonwealth, you don't need a, the signature on the NOI form, if I remember. Like We haven't gotten it in the that. past, so I hope right. that we weren't <laughs> non-compliant. We really, we just did it through through residents, groups, and um, oversight by the Conservation Commission, because there are certain herbicides will, tend, will approve or not approve. We did go through um, National Heritage, mm -hmm which you need to do, because that's a group, Marin, if you didn't know, who checks to see if there's any kind of endangered species in the area before you do any treatment or likely to be. So they have to sign off on that, that there isn't any, assuming there isn't, um, or else there are tighter controls over what you can do. And one of the controls um, they're concerned about, um, uh, the, depart um, the Department of is it fish and game or is it me shop? Is uh, the herring? It, it must be fish and game. They were concerned about the treating and and when the herring runs. So they have time um, constraints on when aquatic management can be performed, and it has to be outside of the times that the that the herring run up into the lakes. Because obviously, we don't want to impact that. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for explaining this. Uh, actually, there isn't uh, almost any of them in front of my do uh, property, but I noticed it started growing uh, in front of some neighbors. So I was. Oh, okay. I was just, you know, it might spread. Sure, so yes. No, it, no, yeah. it's good to stay on top of it. And and if you'd like any more information about that, you can reach out to Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Thanks. Okay. Back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Wow, we got that one, and that was good. Okay, so luckily we don't have another doc permit tonight. Um, and um, But moving right along on the agenda, so ADA Coolidge has a request to continue to uh, February 1st. Can I get a motion to continue ADA Coolidge? February 1st. So moved. I have a second. second. All in favor, a let's see. Mike Gillis game. Sorry. Yo, yes. Susan Chapnick. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. So that is moved to February 1st. Notice of intent for Thorndike Place. Uh, we also had a request from the applicant uh, to continue until uh, February 1st. Can I get Ooh. a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Um, so with that, we'll take a vote. Uh, Mike Gildas game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Uh, Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Chuck Taroni. I say yes, too. You don't say yes. You're abstained. That's David White. Oh, right, David White is. That's well, abstained. That's right. That's right. This is the yeah. right place, yeah. Yep. Just, just a reminder. That's why I skipped you. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I get everyone except for David White? I think I did. Yeah. So move to February 2nd. Okay, heading back to the discussions. We stopped at the park and rec. Um, Mike Gildas Chuck, game. Can I can I just say did you did you do a continuation for eighty eight Coolidge and I missed it? You did miss it because you said yes. I said yes. My goodness, everything went so fast. Sorry. <laughs> I know. I so so we got eighty eight Coolidge and we got uh, Thorndike Place. So that's all set. Uh, we're tidy with that stuff. And now we're going to head back to the discussion items and start with D, which is the Park and Rec Commission Liaison um, 
report. But like I said, there's no, no one went to the last meeting and the next meeting is on the 23rd of this month. And as I understand it, Nathaniel Stevens can't make that meeting. And uh, Susan Chapnick has accepted uh, to go to the meeting. Thank and, you, Susan. Yeah, yep. yeah. The Arlington Land Trust meeting came up and I'd like to attend that. So, yep. Uh, that sounds great. Um, I'll report back to that. So thank you, Susan. I much appreciate that. Sure. And, 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 and truthfully, we probably could skip a park and rec meeting if we... I'm going to look at the know, agenda still, to tell yeah. you the truth and see what they're discussing because there have been yeah. meetings I attended where we really... Right. There was nothing that, that would have affected the Conservation Commission. So I will look at that before I go. Yeah, so... Um... I think it's, I've had a fun time and I thought it was important to get to know the park and rec uh, committee. So for me, that was uh, kind of valuable time. Next on our agenda for discussions is uh, letter E, artificial turf um, study committee. And Mike Gildas game is the liaison to the conservation commission for that. And I reached out to Mike and he has a report for the conservation commission. So Mike, please. Thank you, Chuck. Um, well, as you know, the uh, the artificial turf study committee set up by the town of Arlington uh, has uh, uh, begun its work, and we are into, I think, our fourth or fifth meeting at this point. We're, the group as a committee is meeting weekly, every Tuesday. And uh, in between, the uh, committee has set up three subgroups based on our charge from the town to look at safety, health, and environmental impacts. Uh, each of those subgroups is also meeting between meetings. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, from uh, the uh, environmental subgroup, which is uh, consists of myself and uh, Claire from uh, Planning and Community Development, and uh, Joe Barr, who is, uh, I think, on Capital Planning, um, we've been meeting, seems like all the time. There are a lot of unanswered questions and where we are at this point is gathering information and finding that um, one of the key issues has been the infill on artificial turf, which uh, has in the past largely been crumb rubber. And there's been a lot of studies done on the environmental uh, and health impacts of uh, the uh, chemicals that come out of crumb rubber and how they may affect wildlife and uh, other uh, forms of life out there. Uh, what we've also seen is that there are uh, more uh, recent uh, uh, ideas for infill, including things like coconut shells, walnut shells, and cork, and a bunch of other things. And unfortunately, at this point, I haven't found any studies that talk about the potential impacts of those newer uh, infill products. That said, we still know that from the grass, the artificial grass, polyethylene and other components of artificial turf, there are some uh, off, uh, well, there's some difficulties in, in some of those chemicals as well. Uh, so what we're finding is that there are a huge number of variables and it's been challenging for us to actually nail down the specifics that we want to look at outside of the crumb rubber studies, of which there are a lot. And so uh, we're finding that there are uh, some uh, unknowns at this point that we are going to have to deal with one way or the other. Uh, at our little meeting we had today uh, with the subgroup, uh, we finally decided on what the outline of our report should be. Uh, and the way it's going to work, I think, is each subgroup is going to put together a report uh, in its area uh, and uh, submit that to the committee as a whole. And then those three sub uh, reports are going to have to be somehow uh, melded together to form a comprehensive picture because we are required by the town charge to compare artificial turf to natural turf fields in these three areas and look at potential mitigation measures. One of the big challenges we face is time. Uh, we have to provide this uh, report 
and recommendations to the town 30 days at least before town meeting. And that does not give us a lot of time to do the work we want to do. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all uh, teases out because uh, as I say, we know there's some research gaps um, and there's one important factor that was not part of the charge, but the committee feels we need to address and that is cost, the financial issues. Um, and because uh, that's going to be one of the first questions that come up. What's the comparison of cost between artificial turf and uh, natural turf? And there are a lot of variables there too. When you say natural turf, what are the operation and maintenance plans that you're looking at? Uh, what what are the uses of the fields? How often do they have to be have undergo certain kinds of treatment and so forth and so on? So that one has yet to be answered, but I'm sure we'll get to it. So um, as you can see, there's some progress being made, uh, but there's still some challenges ahead of us. And um, uh, the other challenge, of course, is uh, the variety of places where these fields are going in or not going in. Uh, the uh, town of Belmont, for instance, as I think I reported last time, uh, did not even look at environmental impact. They just based their decision on cost. Uh, the town of Sharon this based their decision on PFAS uh, and not cost, and or they, that was not the main thing. So different towns have different uh, bases for making their decisions. So it, it I don't know if that helps us or not, but uh, the bottom line is that we've got a fair amount of work to do in a fairly short period of time. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, I'm wide open. Mike, um, if I can, um, first of all, I want to say I really appreciate all the work you're doing. I've been sitting in on all these um, meetings um, as as a resident, and uh, I really you're doing a great job. It, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a real it's a lot of work. One thing I would encourage is as as you are representing the Conservation Commission on this study committee. I hope you don't get mired too much in the chemicals and what chemicals are coming off. I mean, it is important, but I think there's more, there, there are other impacts that we've discussed in this commission that are equally as important, including plastic is not habitat, <laughs> um, you know, wildlife habitat concerns, um, heat concerns for the environment. Mm -hmm. Um, and then climate resilience, which we have in our regulations in the town. We are one of the few towns, as you know, who have that. And we are one of the few commissions in town that have a clear climate resilience standard. Um, mm -hmm. And is our artificial turf fields consistent with that? I think they're not. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's my opinion. But you're representing the commission. So at least you have to say the commission has in our local town regulations, climate right. change resilience standards. You right. need to bring those those kinds of issues up because I, I just worry that everybody gets so lost in the chemicals, you know, mm -hmm. the PFAS and the lead and the zinc, and, and those are important, but there are other things that are also important. Right, I appreciate that, Susan. Yes, I'm well aware of those and I thank you for your contributions to uh, our discussions uh, with your emails and papers that you've sent along, they're very important. Uh, yes, those are key points. And one of the other aspects of the committee's work is that we are going to be having speakers. Uh, I don't know yet how many speakers for each subcommittee uh, or anything like that, but uh, uh, the, the questions we are going to be asking speakers will give the committee a chance to ask questions that they did not get a chance to ask at the May uh, town meeting. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, feeling there that they were not able to get into some of the details that people were interested in. So uh, hopefully the speakers uh, will be able to do that. Nathaniel. Thanks. I was just going to note that I, if I remember correctly, reading the or skimming the latest changes that DEP has proposed to the Wetlands Protection Act and the stormwater handbook and stormwater standards, 
I believe they included in their, they've now included in their definition of impervious surfaces, artificial turf fields. That's correct. Mm. I noticed that for yeah. stormwater purposes. So that's something to note. Again, those are proposed regulations, but it's certainly indication of where the agency's thinking is on this and what they're proposing. Right. So that's right. An, another piece of data for your for your thought. Yeah. Thank and you. did I send you that um that language, Mike? If I didn't, I can do that. I thought I did, but from uh, MS4 or from uh, from it, it, it in the in the pro, in the proposed regs. Yeah, I I okay. don't recall. Well, I can look. Okay, and if not, I can send them. And, and I also do echo uh, Susan's deep gratitude for you taking on this assignment, especially with uh, particularly with the weekly meetings. Yeah. Even if you are retired, I'm sure you did not <laughs> spend this amount of this. Your well, it's, uh, this. it's an interesting you. process, I must say. It is indeed. All right. Again. Other questions? Other thoughts? Yeah, David. Kaplan, yeah. Oh, that that that's clapping hands. That's not, oh, a, that's not a raising yeah. hand. But thank, thank you. you. Okay, I think uh, I think we're all set. Um, yeah, I did want to uh, thank Mike. Also, I attended all the all the meetings except for the last one, and um, I'm surprised at each member's uh, commitment to this process. And I think that we're going to come out, uh, or at least they're going to come out with a well thought out, um, well thought out um, recommendation or recommendations. Um, I often think of artificial turf and 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 the resource area and our our jurisdictional area, and think about you know for us and for our jurisdiction this. What comes out of this meeting may not may not affect the conservation commission because we already have our regulations, we already have our standards in our in our um, the WPA, the Act, and the bylaw. Um, but it would be interesting. And I'm and on that note, I'm also not sure what calling artificial turf and I'll, I'll look into this more uh, impervious changes where it would be located within the buffer zone. Um, but that's just me. Uh, interesting, you know, something to move forward and think about uh, during the this process. Okay, so as I see it on the agenda, we don't have anything else. But I did want to mention that everybody, uh, well, I saw a lot of commissioners, and I know Mike uh, took the first boot camp on, uh, I think it was two weeks before, a week before. So I saw commissioners on the January 9th boot camp. And uh, everyone will have an opportunity in person if they want to attend the next boot camp. So that's the WPA boot camp by Alicia Galen um, on uh, January 31st. And then on February 7th, that will be in Tengsboro. I don't expect anyone's going to Tengsboro. But uh, I was quite surprised at how interesting and how many topics they covered. I mean, people really understood um, getting into the second and third layer of what we do and the process that needs to be taken as you're looking at an application and maybe some of the thought process that goes into that. So Alicia does a great job. And she had another one today, which was completely over my head, but it was about enforcement. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, something else, but um, we don't it get into it. About, it was about DEP appeals, I believe, not not enforcement. Well, yeah, it was the appeal well, process, but but how to how that's interpreted and how to position yourself to you know, I guess to prevent that appeal or to oh, understand oh, that oh, appeal. Okay. Yeah, so it was it was a lot of that, um, and to uh, I forgot the terminology, but there's a thing where you want to be a, you want to be a, a partner or something in the appeal. You have to you have to start asking questions right a, right away in the process. Previ so, previous participation, yes. Yeah, 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 and and some of that stuff was really deep, but uh, 
Interesting. You know, I guess if Nathaniel ever decided to leave the Ogs and Conservation Commission, we'd we'd really have to start paying attention to some of these uh, appeal processes. But uh, they've done that. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, well, I, I, I deal with it too often, too frequently with clients that I care to admit. So, okay, um, Chuck, may I make a suggestion? Um, and then I see Mike has his hand up. Um, we get through the Concom emails. We get all Alicia's. Um, emails. And after she does a training, she sends the slides. Would it be possible for Ryan um, to send the slides to the full commission so that commissioners who don't get those emails or aren't on those email lists can avail themselves of looking at the slides if they didn't get to do the training? So sure. I don't think it goes to everybody. Sure. Maybe. So I, uh, yeah. not a problem. I will uh, send uh, Ryan those slides because I don't think Ryan attended. Um, so I'll, I'll when I get oh, the slides, I, the, I do have the them. slides. So oh, good. I could send those to you all right now. Great. Great. And, and maybe if you could, you know, if that's okay with you, Chuck, if, if we lost Susan training, he sends them out because why not? Free right. training. <laughs> so she did. Did she do coastal stuff? It was for Northeast region, right? So she did coastal. Yes, a little bit. A little bit. All right. And Chuck, did you see Mike has his hand up? Oh hi. I actually don't. Yeah. Oh, well, I just <laughs> took it down. Uh, I was just wondering. I don't know if Sarah had an opportunity to uh, deal with the tree committee yet. Um, yeah. But I don't know if she has anything she wants to add to that. Yeah, thanks for the reminder, Sarah. Sure. I actually even said that at the beginning of the meeting. So I, I would be happy to if that's okay. So first, thank you to my to my Gildas game for preparing me, meeting with me to prepare me and make sure I was up to date before I attended. So I attended the tree committee on the 10th. The tree warden had a scheduled conflict and he was not able to attend. Um they were they were discussing new members. There are two new members whose names are being for, put forth uh, to the select board for approval. One of them was here, uh, but did she dropped off earlier? Because uh, we talked about you know that there is mutual interest and uh, um, they um, they discussed the tree damage from the storm. The DPW was working on it and very busy. Um, they discussed some warrant articles that they were considering voting on uh, for the next town meeting. Um, they additionally did discuss that um, their their wish to have their tree committee annual report included in the town annual report, and that was something that they were going to discuss. Uh, and the final thing was they discussed uh, goals for the new year. That's it, but nothing specific. Uh, that was uh, concom. Um, that you know, uh, but it was very interesting. It was truly a pleasure to attend. Thanks for attending. Oh, my pleasure. And the report. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Check. Sure. I where I'm Sarah, here. do you uh, do you know when the next meeting has been uh, scheduled? It's Wednesday of every month, the second Wednesday or first Wednesday, I forget. First Wednesday, February would be the 17th. I think I have that right. Sarah, I think you're muted if you're speaking. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, February 14th. 14th. Yeah. So I, I wrote it down just in case Mike could not go. So. <laughs> well, no, actually, I'm I was gonna. I was gonna see if uh, Sarah, you were interested in sort of permanently taking on the liaison with, uh, if the commission is interested in having you do that. I'd be very glad, at least until this turf committee is done, to have one less meeting to go to. I would love to, but I, it's up to the commission to okay oh, it. So. Fine with me. Okay. Yeah, fine with me. Good. You're okay with it. Okay. Sounds good to me. It's in my calendar. Does that need a vote or where where you oh, I mean it's yeah, fine with me too. I think this is great. I mean all right. one person can't do all the meetings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Move to adjourn.
Mm, wait a minute. One Just before we adjourn, I want to just reach out to anyone that was attending tonight that may have something to say to give them an opportunity to speak. I see some names out there that I don't recognize. Uh, if you feel like speaking, just use the reactions button at the bottom of the screen and raise your hand. Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? I'll second. All in favor, Three, just four. wave. Aye. Hi. Hi. Thanks, everyone. Unanimous. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank Good you. night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.